Motor City Comic Con once again returned to the Suburban Collection Showplace in Novi in 2016. Kicking off on Friday, May 13th, the three-day event celebrated all things pop culture, drawing an estimated 50,000 visitors, many of them dressed up in elaborate costumes from comics, film, television, and gaming. Dozens of vendors sold comic books and collectibles. We caught up with some of the vendors to talk about the Comic Con experience. It's a great vibe. There are a lot of collectors here, a lot of a lot of real true collectors that just go crazy for the stuff. I mean, looking for that really hard to find book. Yeah. What's trending right now? Is it uh, is there modern stuff that's hot right now, or any is the the golden age, silver age, any of that stuff making any movement? Um, well, I mainly deal modern, so that's just really my bread and butter. Uh, right now, the Harley Quinn, Batman, Avengers, all that's really, really kicking. Do you give credit to the movies, uh, uh, the Suicide Squad, all that stuff? Oh yeah, there's a lot of hype around that movie. Uh, the new Civil War that just came out, so the, the, those old books have been really hot. Um, old Man Logan might be popping up here soon, so those have been really doing real, really well. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's... The TV shows and the movies are really bringing in a lot of new readers. I think it's it's everything ranging from the movies to the TV shows. It's all tying into that. So it's really, it's broken the, the comic book uh, paper wall and now it's going into every medium. Mm -hmm. Do you think movies, the Marvel movies like Civil War is having an impact on, on comic sales? Absolutely. I, I think any of the movies have finally broken it open you know take a title like Guardians of the Galaxy which is completely off the wall where now it's an everyday household item same with Harley Quinn coming up in Suicide Squad I mean everyone knows who she is where three years ago four years ago nobody did so I think any of these movies have made it more accessible and open to everyone do you find people uh, coming up to you saying uh, where are your old Deadpool comics Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. impact is that having on value and, and price of back issues? Well, I, I have a box that's just full of Deadpool, and that's because it's asked for so much. So you, it's like a band, a popular band. You have to play to the crowd. So there's a Harley Quinn box, a Deadpool box. Absolutely, the values have increased. You know, there's still a lot of affordable um, copies with those characters, but when you have the first appearances, those have gone up from, you know, Six, seven years ago, the first Deadpool was fifty dollars. Now it's four, five. You know, in perfect shape, it's over a thousand bucks. Yeah, that's incredible. The new Star Wars movie seems to have uh, revived interest in Star Wars. Do you see uh, the Force Awakens uh, having any impact on Star Wars comics? I, I think there was a lot of people that were nervous. Uh, it was a good movie. It, it's it's the mega force that it should be so I, I think everyone is really hyped up for the next couple of movies and all of the solo projects so i think it was a little rocky to to go back to the prequels everyone was very nervous so i, I i'm excited it's been great yeah well, last question you're no stranger to comic-con describe the atmosphere of the environment what do you enjoy about it i think it's you know it's just cool you can come and be what you are and talk to other people that are into that stuff. You know, we all have our spouses and parents and friends that might not understand our passion. So uh, it's good. It's kind of like an AA meeting without the hangover. <laughs> Comic-Con is a very friendly place. I love when they, the little kids come and they're all dressed in costume. That's my favorite part. But this size of Comic-Con is awesome because pe more people come out but you also get the family people, the people, the artists that are here, the you know the stores that are here and local. It, it's we're able to reach out to more people that way. Okay. So do you focus on toys and figures primarily? Yes, we focus on toys and figures primarily. We do have a few select comics. I like to describe our store as a comic store minus all the comics. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What's hot right now? What's what's trending? What, what can't you keep in stock? Anything Funko. Really? Anything Funko Pops. The little things right there, those are hot right now. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Specific oh. characters? What, what characters? <laughs> like Deadpool there, that sort of thing? Or? There's not really a specific character because we carry so many. Animes are big. It, basically, there is something for every collector. We have horror, we have anime, we have 
you know, Disney, Marvel, DC, and then they bring out, you know, old movies and stuff like that. So there's something for everybody. Talented artists and comic book creators were on hand to chat with fans. Many of those in attendance hail from Michigan. Pretty much for the past 25, 30 years, I've been working solely for uh, licensed entertainment, basically. Started off doing t-shirts for Star Trek and she's Betty Page, uh, Batman, Superman, all that kind of stuff. Um, always love superheroes. Uh, Oh, there you I got go. a Batman on there somewhere. <laughs> um, and uh, just kind of took it from there, really. I mean, with the internet nowadays, you know, you can reach people that you couldn't 30 years ago. Um, so now I'm doing a lot of work for Warner Brothers and uh, Fright Rags, which is a horror t shirt company, and different things like that. So, right. what media do you work in? What do you use to create your art? Uh, best can be described as mixed media. Uh, I start with a pencil drawing. And then I do, I use acrylics to uh, put down a base foundation in color. I use gouache, I use Prismacolor pencils, I use ink, I use different kinds of paint. Um, one thing that I do though, just because I kind of grew up in the entertainment industry, uh, you know, if you just do a solid painting, you know, they'll always go, well, we need, to, we need to make it taller and thinner. We need to make it wider. So rarely do I ever do a full painting at, you know, like this. This is actually like eight separate paintings, I see. scanned and then put into Photoshop. So when they say we need it, we need a wide version. I can rearrange things. So I kind of do everything with a graphic designer sensibility, basically. Um, so you know, a lot of these prints that you see laying around have different backgrounds on a larger size or whatever. Allows me to be versatile. You know, I spent a lot of time on the artwork, so it's fun to be able to revisit it and, and like let's do something different with it. You know, so it just makes it more fun for me because I'm a graphic designer as well as an illustrator, so it serves both purposes. Have you ever gotten any feedback from some of your uh, subjects here? Have they ever looked at your work and said, "Holy moly"? Um, Linda Blair was here last year, and I did an Exorcist poster. And I went and had her sign a few, and she looked at it and she goes, has Warner Brothers seen this? And I said, no, I said, I do work for them, but I didn't show them this, just a pet project, because it's one of my favorite movies. She goes, this is better than the regular poster. She goes, I love this. And I gave her one and all that, so. Um, and Norman Reedus, we did a, a, a print where he signed those, and he really enjoyed that. Most of the time, I don't I don't get to meet the people that I'm doing illustrations for. So, but when I do, they're they're complimentary. It's fun, you know. It's always nice to hear what, what the actual subject thinks. Yeah. And finally, what do you think of the atmosphere, the environment of Comic Con? Uh, I assume you've been here before. What do you What do you enjoy about it? I've been here as a visitor. This is my first time as a exhibitor. Um, what do I enjoy about it? Buying stuff. <laughs> um, I like uh, I, now that I know you know if I come back here again and I'm not an exhibitor I'm coming on a Friday because I come here on a Saturday and I can't breathe in here yeah <laughs> but uh, it's fun you know it's great to be around people that like all the same stuff you do and you know especially when you walk through all the people that are selling stuff it's like you know I wish my house I wish this was my house just <laughs> toys fun stuff everywhere it's 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 neat to be in a, an area where just all the stuff that you love is just under one roof you know yeah. Tell me about what you're uh, what you're promoting here today. Mick Morris Miss Solver and Ghost Board Posse. We have a kids book series for uh, second to sixth graders and fifth, sixth, and seventh for Ghost Board. Young readers, so it's a little different. It's not the comics, but it's uh, for kids to get them reading. And good summer reading starts right at this table. So author, illustrator. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been, you guys been doing this? Our first book came out in 2005, shortly after we left the Comedy Castle. So we sort of transitioned from comedy into the kids' books, which was good. It helped us write funny and scary all together, and improv worked really well for the kids' books. And so since it's been, what, 11 years, and we have nine books out. We have a picture book coming out this year and another number three for the older series, which is really scary. Now, I know you, you have uh, fans and young readers who come to your table and approach you. Describe that experience of meeting your fans. Oh, it's great, especially when they said, oh, I've read, I read number one, where's number two? And they get it and everything else, and we sign it. You get author and illustrator, which is great. It's, it's a wonderful thing, especially when they're familiar with the series or we've been to their schools. A lot of our, uh, you know, throughout the year, especially March is Reading Month, we visit a lot of schools. And, you know, 
then when they see her, they pass her, they recognize monstermist.com or the name, that's the fun thing. With their little eyes, like, oh, I did that. And in our school visits, with a comedy background, we just don't, you know. We don't we, just have a slideshow. It's not a PowerPoint. So we talk about the art, the writing, we do voices together. So like for, we do Edith, not Edith and Archie like in the Comedy Castle, but we'll do SpongeBob's voice or The Simpsons. We do Homer and Marge together or the Family Guy voices. I, so. I have to say though, I think the most rewarding of all of it was we got a let we've gotten letters, but one this year was really special. It was yes. a letter from a mother. Her 13-year-old son would never read, no matter what. We went to his school, completely into our books, has read through them all, his reading skills have picked up. So to just change that one little life and get someone interested in reading, that was hugely rewarding. And it's happened before, but this was to a major degree, I think, that he was having issues in school and he's found something he likes. So that's, that's you know, really yeah. Cool. And get them laughing and, and excited about it. And that's what interests them yeah. in reading. If they're laughing, you know, they're having yeah. a great time. So if we present and get them laughing, so when they see us, and they you know they remember that. Oh, they, they, they they cracked us up. These guys are funny. It does help. So all those years of comedy. Yeah. We were in Target that what a few weeks ago, and we could hear this little boy saying, "Yeah, I know it's them. I know it's them." <laughs> and then the mom brought him up and introduced him. And so it's it's just cute if we can make an impression on these children. Perhaps the biggest name appearing in person was Neil Adams, who contributed to the DC Universe with his work on Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, and Green Arrow. And he helped shape the Marvel Universe with his work on the X-Men and the Avengers. Neil, at these uh, Comic Cons, uh, what's it like coming face-to-face uh, -face with your fans and people who admire your work? They're monsters. They're, they're creatures. They're creatures of the night. They're really like zombies. They come after you and they rip at your face and they rip your clothes off and they and they laugh at you and they, oh, they're fun. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time. They buy stuff. They talk about when you were younger and make you feel uh, awful about being older and they, uh, and they, uh, and they, they get prints and, and we have a great time. It's a terrific time. This is like having a circus for three days in a row, <laughs> except you don't eat a lot of bad food and then throw up. <laughs> um, I love your work on Batman. I know you've done a lot of other characters, but um, what do you love about Batman? What do you love about drawing Batman? You see this here? Feel the way to that. <laughs> That's, that's that's a doorstop. That's pounds, big. That's eight pounds of Batman. I mean, this is all the Batman stories I've ever done. This is insane. I mean, look at I. I really kind of insist to people that he's not my favorite character. But when they face me with a book like this, <laughs> one thousand one hundred pages of Batman, I have to admit, yeah, maybe it's my favorite character. But I think the thing that's uh, my favorite thing about him is that he's not a superhero. Yeah, he may be wearing spandex, but he's not a superhero. He has no superpowers whatsoever. He's a detective. He's Sherlock Holmes. He's an athlete. And he's what we all want to be. Aren't we all Batman? Really? Do you have a superhero you prefer over Batman? Or are you going to... No. They're all naked men with lines drawn on their body. And you put colors in the various... You put the number four, number eight, like that. It's just, it's just you know, powerful guys in costume fighting crime. Batman is a human. He's a... That's why we like the Batman movies, don't we? Really? It's a little hard to relate to Superman. We have to have that leap of, uh, of fantasy to get to Superman because he just is so powerful. Batman, he's like us. Fans also flock to the Comic-Con to rub elbows with celebrities from their favorite TV shows and movies. Adam West and Burt Ward were in attendance to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Batman TV show. There were several actors from the popular AMC series The Walking Dead, including Alexandra Breckenridge, who played Jesse Anderson during season five. Uh, I, I really like meeting people. It's, it's nice to be able to meet the fans that watch the shows because on an, uh, uh, and any given day you wouldn't normally get the chance to so yeah everybody's really nice <laughs> that's cool talk about the moment you discovered you were going to be on the show were you aware of the phenomenon that it that it was when you came on board no i had no idea how <laughs> how many fans the walking dead had <laughs> So did you no audition, idea. and was it secretive at all, or? Yeah, no, I when I auditioned for it, it was for a three-page scene of this woman who doesn't exist on the show, and she 
was selling her coffee shop because she just found out she had cancer and she had this whole monologue about it. And, you know, I didn't even know what I was playing until I got to Atlanta and they told me that I was playing a character from the comic book. So then that became multi episodes over the course of the season. What was the experience like? Was it fun for you? It was amazing. It's it's a really hard show to do. I mean, it's physically demanding because of the heat. Um, I got really lucky though because I shot most of my stuff in Alexandria, and we had all these beautiful houses with air conditioning. Um, but it's also really emotionally difficult because these people are in these life or death situations every day, and so it's. But the the people that you work with on the show are just fantastic. The cast and the crew are some of the most amazing people I've ever met. So, and just as we start to fall in love with your character, something horrible happens to you. What was that experience like? Not only filming that, but watching that. Well, that's what the Walking Dead loves to do. They love they love to make you love a character and then rip them away from you in in a second. Um, it was, uh, I thought I had another year left. I was like, I'm, I'm for sure I'll be on the show for another season, but um, it, it was sad. You know, I didn't want to leave the show, but I also, you know, can't complain because I had such a fantastic opportunity. Um, filming the last scene was just brutal and depressing for everyone involved. And uh, it, was, it was disturbing. Are you mad? I'm, a, I'm, I'm about to be a mother oh, in say, September. I if you were able to borrow from that when you were shooting that scene, you know? Um, I, I was just able to empathize with what, I mean, I'm an actor, so I can, I can, I can try to put myself in other people's shoes as much as you possibly can without actually having a child. I mean, anybody can imagine what that would be like, right? Oh, sure. I oh, mean, yeah. it's. It's devastating. Your <laughs> child is being eaten in front of your eyes while you're holding his hand. I mean, it's, it, That's tough. you know. Are you, are you a fan of the show now? Are you going to continue to watch it? Oh, yeah. I love the show. I haven't been watching it recently, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda Strong's body of work appeals to fans of a wide variety of genres, but she's most frequently recognized as Sue Ellen Mischke on Seinfeld. All right, Brenda, first of all, describe the experience of coming to a Comic-Con and, and the atmosphere. What do, you, what do you enjoy about it? Well, I think it's a very exciting place for fans to come because not only do they have exposure to some of their favorite celebrities and characters, but they also have an opportunity to, to buy things that represent the films that they really love or the comic books that they really love. And I just uh, went to the green room and came back through, and it's amazing um, the collections that are available here. So anyone who's a fan, whether it's comic books or, or films, I think they're going to find something really fascinating to occupy their time. And it's a very family-friendly event, too. And you have such a wide body of work. What do people most approach you about? I think I know, but in your experience, what do people associate you, you with you most? You know, I assumed that they would uh, be more geared toward the Star Trek, Starship Troopers, um, space balls type of thing, more of the sci-fi, but I've only done two of these now, and the first one, I sold out on Seinfeld. Yeah. And um, it's kind of, you know, it's the show about nothing but everybody loves. So, um, and there's always the people that walk up and say, okay, what happened with Dallas? Like, please, give oh. me the skinny on that. So people are really lovely, um, and, and it's, um, it's a great opportunity to actually talk to people and put faces to, to those people who give us a, a job, basically. You know, we wouldn't be here without them. When you got involved with Seinfeld, did you have any idea what you were getting yourself into? Did you have any idea it was going to become a, become a legendary sitcom that it's become? You know, um, I was just reading an interview with Julia, and she was saying the first five years that they really didn't have an audience base. It took a while for them to catch on. But I did season eight and season nine, so I had full <laughs> understanding of what a hit it was, and I felt very privileged to be able to step into such a pivotal role. You know, so then Ellen Mischke was... Um, <laughs> Pretty amazing as the uh, Henry Candy Bar era, aka the Brawless Wonder. So. Did you get recognized immediately after that ep those episodes aired? Oh yeah, yeah, especially in New York. William B. Davis played the villainous smoking man on the X Files for nine seasons. The show returned to Fox in 2016 for a limited six-episode run. How would you describe the experience? What do you What do you enjoy about them? There's a lot that I enjoy. One of the things I actually enjoy 
is meeting the other guests. You know, I often see people that I would never otherwise meet and we're all in the same business, so it's a, a pleasure to meet them. The fans are always uh, warm, friendly, um, different, uh, so that's always a treat as well. Talk about the impact the show, The X-Files, has had on your life. Well, for starters, without it, I probably wouldn't have met my wife, who you see sitting right beside me. Um, so that was a pretty, pretty big impact. Um, uh, it certainly brought me a lot more visibility as an actor, so and a lot more uh, just also uh, screen time, just experience, work, work experience. So it's been great. Your character is so interesting. What kind of reactions do you get from the fans? Is there a little bit of fear when they meet you, or uh, do you do you dispel that pretty quickly? I, it dispels quite quickly, although there have been a couple of incidents where, um, you know, somebody would look over. I remember once I was on an elevator and it was just me and it was one other person. And she looked at me and she went, oh, oh my God. And then she said, you look like that guy from the X-Files. And I said, I am that guy from the X-Files. And then she went and got all her friends to sign autographs with. The Motor City Comic Con was founded in 1989 by Michael Goldman of Motor City Comics. Having wrapped up its 27th year, the event has cemented its place as one of the biggest Comic Cons in the nation and one of the best. And that will wrap up this year's coverage of the Motor City Comic Con. Next year's dates have already been set for May 19th, 20th, and the 21st. We'll see you in 2017.